Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. This is Sabrina from Financial IT. I'm a managing editor. And today we have special guests here from Collegia. And you are Eduardo, right? Yes, I am. Could you please tell us briefly about yourself and your company's mission? Yeah, so um, Collegia started because when we look into the pensions market, we were a little bit stupefied that it was failing its two basic missions. Uh, First and foremost, a pension can do anything. It can go to the moon, can come back, can like run 100 kilometers faster than a man, but that's not enough. It has to buy some type of income at retirement, and it has to be able to influence the conditions upon which you're going to be able to enjoy your retirement. Namely, you can have a lot of money, but you being in a destroyed world, it's not going to be a good retirement. So those are the two things that allow us to create collegiate. And in terms of background, I'm a former investment banker turned interest rates and fixed income trader. Around 2015, I had a very millennial mid-20s life crisis saying like, ah, oh, life has to be more than this. It has to be more than making money. I'm the generation that started to work into the financial crisis. So I had my kind of an interesting moment and quit my job, set up a digital and sustainable grocery store. So from banking to digital groceries. It worked out quite well. It became one of the top five apps most downloaded in Brazil, expanding internationally. And in 2017, I decided that even though I love the startup world, it's, uh, digital groceries was not the thing that made me tick. So I, I quit and did what I think now this is traditional. Every single other person doesn't know what to do next does, which is to do an MBA. And then I, uh, I chose Oxford because it just came and fell in love with the place. And, uh, and then that's when I met Rick. From the very beginning, we hit it up together. And Collegia was born, I think, of our joint dissatisfaction with what we saw was too much focus on product rather than outcomes. So you are stepping into the pensions market, am I right? Yes, yes. Um, can you briefly describe how the platform actually works from user's perspective? Okay, so we have multiple users at the same time on the platform. And we see ourselves as these super connectors. So for us, the role of a pension scheme is it's going to sound completely counterintuitive. It's not about making investments. I think the role of a pension scheme is really about connecting people. In particular, when it comes in the context of, of uh, employment savings, it's become the second pillar, workplace pensions. Let me explain why. So you have in the market, you have individuals that are being employed. And because they are employed, they are being put into a pension scheme. Then you have employers that the government mandates them to be putting individuals into a pension scheme. Then you have asset managers that are able to manage the money and the investments on behalf of those individuals, fulfilling the obligations for those employers. And then you have insurance companies that come and then make sure that these investments are as safe as possible by providing what we call in the UK, the FSCS guarantee. Basically, you wrap all the investments into a long-term unit insurance policy. And then even if the asset manager goes bankrupt, even if the pension provider goes bankrupt, even if the employer goes bankrupt, all the money from the individuals are completely safe, 100%, with no upper limit. So when we, when Rick and I first looked into this market, we said, okay, cool. The, what is missing the role here is actually to facilitate and translate the needs from one of them to the other. You, you don't need another investment manager. You need someone to, for specifically for the individuals, where you have an app, which is focused on retirement planning, so you can see what kind of retirement you're track for and make choices about the world you want to have in the future. And on the back of that, our algorithm matches you to a portfolio managed by one of the world's biggest asset managers. So the user never chooses funds, but chooses outcomes. Their income are going to want to have in retirement and what kind of world they want to retire in. The employer, similarly, does not choose a pension. The employer chooses a way that they can fulfill and uh, run their payroll. And then the platform adds another user, which is the accountant, the payroll bureau, that can then go and facilitate this on behalf of the employer. But the employer just receives reports and it chooses a way as the user employer, how do I want my information to be fed into Collegia? Then the asset managers can pitch to us the kinds of funds that they want to have. And then we curate the list, always with the perspective of does it, does it meet the needs of the users when it comes to outcomes, the world they want to live in, and does it, is, it, is it a fund that is able to provide some kind of income of retirement? And the same is true for the insurance companies. So each one of them has a difference, but the key experience of the users, they receive a welcome pack. In that welcome pack, 
they they receive they can see what kind of how their pension works and from every single moment onwards they see what's the impact this pension is going to have in the future and then for every single action they take change contribution levels change when they want to retire opting out of the scheme we tell them what's the impact on their retirement income so it's really it's really focused on outcomes and very little about financing of itself so it simplifies a lot yes yes yeah, so Rick and I were first discussing this. The, the, the thing for us that was surprising is that we, we still make pensions. To be honest, we, lost, lost, we still make finance in general. We still make pensions as if someone has, is, is, is a specialist on the subject. So I am a former trader. I, use, I, I never trade equities in my life as a professional. And uh, I also trade interest rates and bonds. I am not qualified to go and, and, and it sounds counterintuitive having a pension startup, but I'm not qualified to manage a pension portfolio because it's not what we do. It's, it's a specialist knowledge. And actually someone to manage a pension portfolio will, ha will have different people working to kind of have the different asset classes and et cetera. Yet, even if you are a financial professional, that means you're still not able to manage your pension portfolio. Yet we assume, especially in the UK with the pension freedoms, yeah, so individual responsibility. There you go, you can choose here. You go mix of bonds, 30%, equities, 60, 70%. And then what's the mix between emerging markets, developed markets? It's kind of like you're making, you're, you're making choices upon things that you don't understand. It is not because people are dumb or ignorant. It's because very few people do understand because it's, it's, it's a very niche area. You know, We will not make, we will not ask a, a, someone on the street to make a choice about brain surgery. Granted, investment managers not brain surgery, but you'd not be asking someone on the street about a constitutional matter like a criminal law or, or, and et cetera. So the idea is to really to translate needs and outcomes into portfolios. And then being this connector and translator is how Collegia operates. That's amazing. That's great. And I was reading your website, the about section, and you were talking about the guiding principles, the responsibility. And could you tell us more about that? What does that mean for you? I think when we go into 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 Collegia, how we want to set up Collegia, um, more, more than what just we tell on the website, we can look for more history, right? So we took a very different approach. When you set up a startup, very often people say, like the, the common wisdom, so to speak, is fail fast, fail often, just put an MVP there, see if someone wants to buy it, and then if not, don't even care. Our fear in kind of doing this, this, this approach is you're still dealing with people's retirement savings. You know, One mistake can cost dearly from that perspective. And then doing this kind of fast and loose approach or just like, you know, this uh, quick and dirty approach, it's completely defeats the purpose of trying to, to bring better outcomes for members. So Rick and I set up Collegia at the end of 2018, and we only felt comfortable releasing the product in October 2021. And I mean, if you look at my, the investors were not very delighted about that. Uh, I think a lot of people called us crazy about that. But the truth is that until we're not comfortable having a product that adds value, uh, we're not going to be launching it. And I think that this is what, I mean, how say actions speak louder than, than just words when it comes to values overall. Because deep down, you know, we, we, we try to, we, we had one, and we always try to kind of, sort of get ourselves some questions in terms of what is, so rather than just pointing out just not internally, rather than externally, like, oh, this is the values, like print it on the wall and then say, yes, this is what we do, curiosity, this, this, et cetera. We always said, is this a product that we would like to consume more than the other ones available in the market? And if we say yes, then we launch and then we go forward. If we say no, then we don't. And I think rather than ask, just saying about the values, I think it's, we always try to make with the values that we have uh, questions. And then if those questions are satisfied, then we move. This is not to say that everything is perfect with collision and everything, and I'm not saying that. But we, we only launch them, we only put, put things in the, on the market when we feel it's comfortable. And don't get me wrong, we still make mistakes. And every single day, Rick and I was staying up until like 8, 9 p.m. yesterday, discussing stuff that we think it's not, it's, it's not up to the standard and the level that we expect you to have from such specific routines in collegium. Yeah, and also I think from a member's perspective, I think people need to be given access to information every single point in time. Uh, I don't believe in an approach where you can understand your asset allocation, how much money you have in your expected income in the future, only once a month or only once a year. I think in the UK and across the world, 
people need, be, need to be able to access information 24 7 365 even if it's going to be for christmas eve um, that is something that needs to be there every single day of your life and the other thing is that yeah we are speaking as, as an automatic enrollment pension provider you are essentially managing people's money on a monthly basis as such you're taking the money out of the pay slips they need to be able to understand what is happening with the money they need to be able to understand how much they're being charged transaction by transaction because this is a big money that is taken from the pay slips and as such it needs to be they need to be able to understand what's happening there with the personal finances pensions is part of your financial life is far in the future usually the average person in the case 38 years old so there is, there is some time but it's part of your personal finance if if you can if you can ask anyone in the streets who is your bank who are you banking with and how much money you have in your bank account, everyone can tell you, at least they can check. Not the same yet with, with the pension side, which I think is wrong. Yeah, and it's also about the, how the app is, how the platform is convenient to use, right? About the user experiences. And um, yes, and, and the availability uh, also, if I may, Sabrina, because I think there's a lot of stuff that say, you know what, you shouldn't have a phone number for people to contact. The truth is that we're, we're servicing a market that has over 22 million potential clients, individuals. And for a lot of them, they want to actually talk to someone and inquire about their pension. And, and I think thinking about the values, how we approach, even if we're able to have like a higher, you know, reduce the cost to serve, so that the customer lifetime value increases, and et cetera, et cetera. It's great for business, don't get me wrong. But we're still talking exactly what we said. It's like the person has never consented to it. So that's the way the legislation was run off. It's not our fault, but still, they never consented. They were taking money away from the pay slip and put into a pension. Of course, the employer is also putting money. The government is also putting money. It's a great deal. But still, the first thing you see is like, ah, I was due 100, and now I have 95. And you're like, mm, you know, this feeling of like it kind of lost something there. And I've, I think it also dictates how you need to provide your services. Not only being digital, not only being easy, but... It's being, being easy and simplified, intuitive, but we say, I think, in, the, in, the, in the, the, the website for all the different segments that could be comp compromised or that be part of your, your client base. And are there any news in this auto enrollment pensions landscape? Um, there are habits of the people, how they take care of their financial health, right? Are these habits changed today or not? Um, that's a great question. It's it's, it's interesting that, so auto enrollment has increased by over 10, 12 million, the number of people that are investing in a pension. Uh, ha have the habits changed? It's difficult to say they have because the way auto enrollment was created, and this is what we know is always works with the pensions industry, is using inertia. So inertia is very key. Right? The, the person is automatically enrolled. They actually have to bother to opt out. And then every three years, they are again enrolled, even if they don't change, you have already opted out. So you, you, you try to force inertia to, to take someone to, to, to save towards retirement. Uh, having said that, what we're seeing right now is, is it, it entering a new stage. When Alteron first came, it kind of the novelty, everyone expected lots of uh, huge opt-out rates. Opt-out rates are hovering around 9%. This is kind of okay-ish, things are going. But the way that it was introduced is, and the way that it's not being updated. So for instance, the first 10,000 pounds of your salary do not count towards your pension contributions. But this has not been updated in years, yet inflation is going up, 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 up. And Similarly, uh, after 50,000 pounds, it's also not counted towards your pension. So what we're having right now is more middle and low income earners uh, contributing more to their pension than they were before, simply because you have wage inflation, inflation coming. And so now the percentage of, of your, your contributions as a percentage of your total available income or real income as, uh, um, as middle income and lower income individuals, is going higher and higher and higher. If you combine that with the, the, the cost of living crisis we're having now in the UK, we fear that we might have uh, some more problems in terms of people opting out, simply because uh, not only everything is becoming more expensive, but also their pension is becoming more expensive as a percentage of their income altogether. And, and the fact that the government didn't want to, uh, to update those things, so they don't benefit us as a provider, 
but still I think it's, a, it's an issue because if now you have more people that will be opting out and then opting out will be worse at retirement. And and in the fact that they didn't increase also the, the upper band also means that this this whole thing is falling just on the lower middle income earners, which is just challenging. So to answer your question, we didn't see much in terms of change of behavior, but what I feel we might be seeing right now is the reality that since outer Roman has come has passed, legislation needs to be updated to reflect what the current conditions are, or at least the guidances and, and the thresholds and et cetera. And this is not being done. And I think this is not being done for budgetary reasons, and it might lead to, to a less efficient law because people will start to adjust to it. And yeah, I see. And how about funding? Do you receive one? Yes. Yeah, so we've, we have a very, uh, gladly, we have an amazing group of investors. So they range from family offices and uh, angels. We also are supported in the, in, the product, in the delivery of the business by Alliance Punchstein. They essentially, when they created the portfolios, they liaise with us and et cetera, and help us also on the distribution side of it. But Collegia is a, is a private, and also I also have to give a, uh, I have to mention Oxford University Innovation. So our first, basically, outside investors, and by outside, I mean non-RIC, non-EDU, <laughs> was OEY, Oxford University Innovation. It's the technology and IP commercialization arm of the University of Oxford. And uh, so combined with OUI and just and family offices, this is how our investor base uh, is, is, is off right now. And we're not, not intending to change it very much. And the last one, what are your future plans for the company? I think the future plans for the company is, is going to Alti Roman 2.0. And, and this sounds completely like those, those uh, uh, three, three, let, three word uh, phrases that mean nothing. But, Think about like, my answer to the last question. Right? Ultimately, was introduced into a specific context. It was a law that was in 2008 passed. We are far from that, from that period. And then um, your pension, you cannot use it if you have an emergency situation and you need to, any, any, any need to unfortunately, kind of, either fortunately, unfortunately, you need to uh, uh, use some cash. So we're trying to make the whole offering more compatible with the situations that people uh, face including if you have an emergency need for cash and also what kind of other things are related to your pension and risks involved to your pension, to your long-term retirement savings and your short-term financial well-being that could be provided together with the pension. I, we don't look, and, and the future of Collegia is dictated by the vision that we have of ourselves, not necessarily as a pension company, but a tech company that does pensions. And in particular, as the super connector and this information flow and trying to uh, translate needs into problems and into allocations and etc. But th th this, these are the next steps on what we're doing. It sounds amazing, so promising. I think so. <laughs> so we're watching you grow, actually. And we'll be happy to post your press releases in future. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us today. It was a very nice chat. We got a lot of new information about the pensions uh, landscape and the current trends happening in this area. And I hope to see you soon again.